Hi guys! Um, just a sort of motivation be before we'll proceed to our um, to our topic. Um, I would just, I would just like to inform everyone that this is our second to the last topic for the um, software engineering one. Um, I know that we are uh, we're actually a bit struggling about the revisions that we made and also the um, the topics that I previously discussed. But again, um, just go to the um, to the brighter side of it because in the next semester, uh, you will not have a hard time implementing or developing your system because you already have these um, these modelings or these designs that we will be talking. Okay. So by the way, I know that we already discussed about the architectural design. Uh, which represents the structure of data and program components that are required to build a computer-based system. So for this week, or for this topic, uh, we will learn how to elaborate the major components that are included in our architectural design. Okay, so we will talk about the component level design. Okay. So I want you to recall, guys, that um, analysis modeling and design modeling are both iterative in nature. So basically, they are um, iterative in uh, they are iterative in actions. Okay. So elaborating the original analysis class may require additional analysis steps, which are then followed by or followed with. Um, a design modeling steps to represent the elaborated design class. Okay, the component level design is a design activity as an elaboration of the architectural design that you had previously accomplished. I know that you are done um, um, creating, uh, you're done creating your um, architectural design. If we will talk about the component level design, it's actually the elaboration of what you did, of what you previously accomplished, okay? So in this case, each of the major components are detailed to uncover specific design elements such as our data structure. Okay, one moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, such as our data structure, um, our algorithms, interface or, um, characteristics and also the communication mechanisms allot uh, allotted to each um, software component okay so also um, I know that you can see uh, these bullets here okay first things first before coding or develop or in the development part um, the component level design can be used to review for correctness and consistency with other components. Take note on that one. Another one. Also, um, component level design can be used to, um, to assess whether the data structures, interfaces, and algorithms will work. So basically this is for our technical or um, the coding review. Okay, so we Actually, um, we review everything um, from the coding itself, also the operations that will happen to that specific component, um, the data itself, and also the interfaces. We will talk more about that one later. And lastly, um, it should provide uh, sufficient information to guide implementation, okay? So if we will talk about component, by the way, as what I discussed earlier, um, if we will talk about component, component is a modular building block for a computer software, okay? So by the way, it can be a class or package or modules or collections of functions, okay? So hopefully, I um, I briefly uh, hopefully I was able to uh, explain to you guys what is the definition of the component level design okay so let's proceed to our next slide 
Okay, so here is how we can create a component design. Okay, so from an object-oriented perspective or an object-oriented approach, a component is actually a set of a collaborating classes. When we say collaborating, um, or we can say it's a related classes, okay? So we can begin with reviewing the analysis model and later elaborating the analysis classes um, to consider new information from iteratively collecting user requirements and identifying interface or control classes. By the way, you will notice here that um, the um, component level design will not work if there is no analysis class as the basis. Okay, so we need to start first with the analysis class, which is the one that you have created previously or our analysis model. Then in this part, we can be able to create our design component. Okay, so in our design component, we will elaborate that one here. Okay, so essentially, um, we can create a design classes that corresponds to the analysis classes. So again, just like what I, um, just like what I told you earlier, um, uh, we can create our design class or our design component, but we need to correspond that one or there should be a relation to our analysis class or analysis model, okay? So based on this example, I know that I keep on, um, putting my pen here already. <laughs> we already have identified the analysis class here. This is our analysis class, okay? And also, and we find that this analysis class relates to our design component, which is the print job. So again, our analysis class is here, and we actually identified that this analysis class can be able to generate a design class which is the print job okay so this creation by the way it's actually a form of elaboration so based here on the print job design class we need to elaborate that one here i know that you can see it here that we can see our data here and we also can see um, all the operations needed here okay so again analysis class then we can be able to create um, we can be able to create our um, design class which is the print job then in the print job we can now elaborate um, the data and also the operations here okay uh, by the way, uh, we need to take note about this one. I know that here in the design component part, you'll notice that um, you can see two lines here, right? This is what we call, let me make this one blue. One moment. Okay, this is what we call the interface. Here, interfaces. So by the way, um, the... Uh, Compute job and the initiate job, it's actually interfaces. Okay, aside from that one, I've noticed that. Okay, um, here in the elaboration part of the class, um, yeah, there is no symbols. Okay, I will just explain the symbols here. So by the way, the symbols, for example, if we have plus, the meaning of this one, it's, it contains a public class, okay? So let me put that one public. Oh, I'm sorry, there you go. That's public if we can see a plus sign. Next, we also have a minus sign. So meaning for a minus sign, this is actually a private so I know that you uh, you already encounter um, these terms in your previous courses. So this is actually a private class. So for example, only for an example, huh? 
um, for the number of pages this is private you will put here a minus sign for paper type you will put here plus sign so meaning that is a um, public class and lastly we have um, hash key or hashtag <laughs> so by the way for this one this is for a protected um, sorry mm, I don't have any pen here okay okay so this is a protected class okay so please take note about these symbols because we uh, you might need that one to be included in your operations also in your data okay let's proceed okay so alternatively um, in a procedural context a component is actually a functional element of a program that incorporates a processing logic the internal data structures that are required to implement the processing uh, the processing logic and also the interface that enables the component to be invoked and the data to be um, passed to it okay actually um, I know that we are talking about component earlier right um, the module which is this one um, the module is our component okay so you can see it here in my in the figure um, on my slide uh, we have a job um, print job uh, management system so the print job man management system um, has its own modules so for example this one this one this one this one so everything is actually each one of them um, has its own module or basically uh, th these um, boxes here are modules okay so those modules are actually our components okay so you can see uh, you can see in this example um, it is actually a procedural architecture okay it is actually a procedural architecture um, you have noticed that I use a component constructs or symbols here right you can see it's a component constructs okay and also you've noticed that the architectural style used in this example it's actually call and return so it is actually very procedural in con um, in contrast to object-oriented programming right remember that in the um, call and return architectural design or architectural style I'm so sorry um, there is what we call um, call and return in the sense that these components below or these modules below are actually invoked um, they're actually invoked um, by this component above them okay you have noticed that this is a procedural example in contrast to our object-oriented programming right oh I forgot um, each module or each component by the way um, it contains elements just like what I said earlier elements like our processing mod uh, processing logic um, our data structure and also our interfaces also um, note that the shaded boxes here this one one we have one two three four five and six okay um, these unshaded boxes are equivalent in function to the operations defined for the print job class discussed previously so actually it's all it's all here these operations it's here right in this case um, however each operation is present is represented as a separate module that is invoked as shown in this figure um, other modules are used to control processing and are therefore 
control the components or the other components okay and also before I will forget um, uh, you have noticed that um, this kind of elaboration of the modules or the components are actually similar to the primitive data type uh, sorry the primitive um, da uh, data flow diagrams that we have created previously in the BFD uh, you you were actually um, you're doing it um, procedurally right um, you are doing it by uh, by sequence and make sure that each process uh, will be uh, this kind of process will be invoked if ever that the process above them uh, will be executed first right so by the way this type of uh, this figure it's actually a good example of a um, procedural architecture okay okay so right now um like like what i said earlier each component or module in our architectural design and uh, designed and based on its corresponding analysis model uh, we can generate element by elaborating on the analysis models right let us take a look at this example we have the compute page cost okay the compute page cost module from our earlier um, example let's see here this one let's go back okay the compute page cost module accesses data by invoking the module which is our interface get job data get job data here which allows um, all relevant data to be passed to the component okay so from this interface it will be um, it will be invoked and to be passed to this component which is our compute page cost and the database interface which this one access cost DB uh, this actually enables the module to access a database that contains all printing costs okay so as the sign continues the compute page cost module is elaborated to provide this one this one okay this is uh, actually an elaborated module for our compute page cost okay again um, the compute page cost module is elaborated to provide an algorithm um, algorithm detail and interface detail meaning this is not a class this is actually an elaborated module okay so when we say um, algorithm detail um, this can be represented using um, using the pseudocode text uh, pseudocode text shown in this figure okay so if you can see it here in this figure okay or with a flowchart or an activity diagram okay the interfaces I believe that the activity diagram you were uh, you were able to create that one in our previous exercise right so the interfaces are represented as a collection of input and output data objects or the items okay so design elaboration continues until sufficient detail is provided to guide construction of the component if you will notice here in the elaborated module uh, we have our data here and we also have our operations with interfaces right our data here from number pa uh, number pages going to sf and we also have these interfaces okay so um, component level design in a nutshell is the definition and design of components and modules after the architectural design phase by the way before I will forget 
um, aside from we elaborated the um, compute page cost we also you also noticed here that in the compute page cost it was invoked and you can see here all the um, data right all the pseudocodes needed here here we go okay and lastly um, component level design it actually defines the data structures the algorithms interface characteristics and communication mechanism allotted to each component for the system development in our next topic we will talk about the process in creating the component level design